Hey guys, welcome to episode 5 of 3 Player Co-op. I am Mark. I am Sean. And I'm Mike. So this week we're looking forward to the announcement of Assassin's Creed 3. However, it seems to be the worst kept secret in gaming history, as most of the details have been leaked already. So we have a collection of screenshots and information, and today there's going to be a full announcement with possibly a trailer. So Sean, as a dedicated fan of the series, how are you feeling about this launch? I am getting pretty excited about this. I wasn't that fussed until the details started coming out, but the whole idea is very cool. I still haven't played Revelations, but now I have the urge to go back and do so immediately. Whenever I heard the news initially that there was going to be another Assassin's Creed game, I thought, okay, big deal. There's been boring repetitive sequel after boring repetitive sequel for the last couple of years now. But when I found out it was three, that it was a new numbered entry into the the series, I thought, okay, this could go somewhere. It's going to be set in the US during the US Revolution. And that's going to be about 1.5 times the size of Rome, I think it was, from Brotherhood. The screenshots look outstanding. So what is it about the scene and the settings that are so intriguing to you? I think it's because in each, each game the setting has been a kind of fundamental era for that time. The Crusades were kind of a fundamental time for the Muslim world and the Middle East. The Renaissance was obviously a pretty big thing for Europe and now we're seeing the American Revolution and when America really came into prominence. And since the outside the animus bits of the previous games were set in America, it kind of had to reach there. I suppose this game will ultimately bridge the gap between all of these ancient assassins and modern times. We'll get to see how it all links up. I think the setting and the time frame are really interesting. Uh, initially, I wasn't, I, I wasn't really sold on it. You know, I think the best thing it has going for it is it's unique. I, I don't know of any other game that's set in America in the colonial era. Yeah, I agree with Mike about the the fact that these games are unique. I can't think of any other game that's set in that particular time period. It's the same with Assassin's Creed and Assassin's Creed 2. Those time periods were unique. Uh, it, it, it's interesting that you almost get a mini history lesson in these games. Like, I, I did a big chunk of my degree thesis on Cesare Borgia. And who's the villain in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood? Cesare. And he's a scumbag, just as the history books told us. And if you thought you weren't going to learn anything in this series, there you go. One interesting thing that kind of concerns me is that there really aren't a whole lot of buildings in America then. So you'll wonder what sort of stuff they're going to scale. It almost looks like Red Dead Redemption, which is something I thought I'd never say about Assassin's Creed, but the similarities are quite striking, really. Do you think Assassin's Creed 3 can do enough to earn itself a Game of the Year nomination, or perhaps win it overall? Uh, and there was a really big step up, in my opinion, between Assassin's Creed and Assassin's Creed 2. That was an excellent game. If the step up from 2 to 3 is the same as the one between 1 and 2, we could be looking at a really revolutionary game here. And I'd really hope that Assassin's Creed 3 could surprise me in the same way that 2 did after my experiences with 1. There's serious potential for it to be game of the year. If it's as much a step up as 2 was on 1, then it will be unbelievable if it's suitably different and it stands out in the series then it could very well be game of the year i really really hope so now the second question i wanted to ask as well is we're nearing the end of some trilogies or the number three in certain games like we had gears of war three we've had we're having mass effect three assassin's creed three which franchise do you think has stood out from the rest over its its course of its arc i should say um i think that's a really interesting question mark and i kind of like to raise a counter question to that in how many gaming trilogies stay as trilogies now so you know that we've got the producers of mass effect 3 saying you should hang on to your save games for something else uh god of war 3 which you know might have been a trilogy but now it's got its its fourth game in the series gears of war 3 i I think the guys at epic would be crazy not to follow that up and the demand is there so do these trilogies really exist I'm going to agree with Mike and say that they're never going to leave it at three for most of these. The four is just too easy and it, 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 it's a serious potential to make loads of money. So why the hell wouldn't they, you know? So God of War is very much a trilogy, but they couldn't resist going for number four. There's too much money to be made. And why wouldn't they really? They're good games, but 
sometimes it's okay to just leave it at three and have it. It's like the original Star Wars trilogy. It would have been fine to leave that on its own and not release sucky new films. One of the cool things about the Assassin's Creed series is how involved you get you get with the main character's life. Like with Ezio, you saw him from childhood, essentially, and then he became an assassin, and it was all very cool. And the his trilogy of games, the Ezio trilogy, uh, kind of charts his entire life, and in Revelations, he's a, look, looking pretty old. I wonder, are we going to see that so much with the new assassin, Connor? How, what age will he be when the game finishes? Will this be his entire life? It looks as though Valve might be entering the hardware market with the creation of a Steam box or Valve box, depending on what you actually want to call it. It's as yet unannounced. However, Valve has recently signed up to E3 2012, which indicates that they'll be announcing something big. Many had previously hoped for the much-anticipated Half-Life 3, but we could be left waiting. Most of the details are as yet unknown, but there is a lot of speculation regarding the components it's going to have and where it'll actually fit in your living room slash work area. So, what are we thinking of it so far? First of all, they should just call it a companion cube, and I think I'd be sold immediately. If they're smart, they'll release Half-Life 3 for this as a launch title. That will shift so many of them. But, of course, we don't really know what it is. It sounds like it's a halfway house between a PC and a console, which doesn't sound that appealing. But they could be trying to create a new part of the market, and there's certainly potential there. Of course, if they're really smart and sneaky about it, they will just go for an exclusive title, but they can't really get away with that. And the problem is, if they don't, people will just pick it up for the 360, PlayStation 3, or PlayStation 4, depending on when it's actually released. Yeah, I reckon going exclusive with all their big names like Half-Life and Portal would really annoy people. I think for a start, there is no way it will replace console gaming. They're just two different beasts. I'm sure anybody who would consider themselves to be a PC gamer uh, would agree with that statement. Um, they're just they're different experiences. Um, if this is going to be a system that's designed to live in your living room, sit under your TV and you use it with a wireless keyboard and mouse, then they're not really first to the party with this either because Alienware recently released a, a system called the X51. Um, it's not actually standardized uh, and the rumor is that this this Valve system is going to be standardized. Every so often you hear talk of having one box on top of your TV. I think Microsoft may have said that about the Xbox and maybe Sony about the PlayStation. You know, they all want to be that singular box. And I don't think it's going to work out like that. We all have our separate boxes and it'll take serious convincing for us to change around. Uh, but this is designed to, I suppose, complement your consoles. I I don't think they're trying to replace a console because it's a tough thing to do. There are certain gaming experiences that you're only ever really going to get on a console uh, in much the same way that the PC just excels at certain things. Yeah, part of me would like it to be a PC that's a little more convenient and accessible because there are great quality titles available on PC that you can just play with a keyboard and mouse and they feel right. We'll say StarCraft 2, for example, one of the biggest games for PC in recent years. The problem with that is... How can it fit into your living room? I've always thought that you have a certain space that you'll play games in on PC, which usually has a desk just for a keyboard and mouse, and that doesn't really fit when you're playing on a couch with a console and pad usually. What I would see it is a great way to maybe branch out or expand your your living room gaming setup, because unless you've got your, your PC well hidden or really well set up, it, it doesn't really fit into your living room gaming setup or at least it wouldn't in my house anyway. I'm struggling to see what the unique selling point for this system is, if I'm being honest. So maybe one of you guys could help me out with that. It, it does seem strange, and I don't think it's going to work. Okay, so I think if one of the unique selling points for this system is that it provides a benchmark that, you know, all PC games can can say, okay, well, we'll be developed with this game in mind, then I think that there's going to be a backlash from the PC community. So Battlefield 3 looks so much better on the PC than it does on a console. Um, but you do have a fairly vocal PC community who say that the current console generation uh, are now holding back PC developers because they don't want to develop something too complex because the consoles won't be able to use it. So I think that this Valve box will probably end up doing the same thing. 
if it becomes a case that you can replace the parts in it, then again, I kind of wonder what's differentiating this from a regular PC. I mean, are they going to design it that it's hot swappable? You just yank out the graphics card, stick in a new graphics card, turn it on, and it works immediately. I mean, if, if they develop a system like that, it's great. But it's, I suppose it's not really that simple. Or I don't think it's that simple. The whole idea that you might have to switch out graphics cards and all that, as Mike noted, that just sounds ridiculous to me. One of the glorious things about console gaming is its simplicity and the fact that you have this console, you know things are going to work on it, except for the occasional thing like the expansion pack for the N64, but that's ancient history and it doesn't happen too much anymore. Again, it comes back to the PC market. PC market is upgrading all the time, people are pushing for bigger and better. Whereas if Valve step in and say every two to three to four years, we're going to set a new benchmark, then that'd be okay by me because you know in four years' time you go, you go out and you buy these particular parts and it's essentially like buying a new Xbox, which we'll have to do very soon. It just sounds like Valve are trying to standardise the market and the PC gaming market is anything but standardised. You know, one of the great things about PC is how much you can alter things to suit your own needs and this just sounds like a, a mix between a console and a pc and it doesn't sound that attractive so will you be picking one up i'm guessing no from your standpoint sean but mike <laughs> uh the key point with regard to this for me is the price that they come in at obviously like everything else it will depend on the price right now i'm gonna say no but you never know valve can pull it out of the bag they surprise us with portal in a big way and who knows what could come and steam is a great system and if they apply the same sort of logic to that with the console it could be great i don't think we really need the next generation of consoles i mean what we have hasn't really started showing its age now i know we're coming to the time where they start releasing new consoles but it'd be nice to get another couple of years out of this generation we can't forget that one developer does not a console make. We can't just depend on Valve. They need to get everyone on board with this. Okay, so unfortunately there isn't a whole lot of official information so far about the Gabe Cube, the Valve Box, the Steam Station, or the Companion Cube, whatever you want to call it. So we'll have to find out further down the line what's going to be in store. Possibly at E3, seems the Valve are going to be in attendance. So thanks very much as always guys for tuning in. We'll catch you again next week.